Welcome to System Mastery, the podcast where we make it so, 1d6 damage at a time. I'm Jeff, John is here with me, and this week we set a course for the second star to the right by looking at the Star Wars role-playing game, second edition, revised and expanded, at Warp Factor 6. We'll boldly review what no podcast has reviewed before. Engage. And welcome back. Hi, John. How hey. are you? Hey, Everything's wonderful. Uh, so this week we read a West End Games book. Uh, the West End Games Star Wars series began in 1988 and continued printing all the way through 1999. Uh, but the one we have is a later release, second edition. They changed the name of the book several times as they released them. But we have Star Wars, the role-playing game, second edition, revised and expanded. Which I think is mostly just... They helped edit out some of the fuck-ups from earlier edition, and I don't know, maybe put a few more powers in there or something. I might have thrown in a few more powers. I think they, they, they kind of combined this book with some of the previous books. I, I get the impression that droids used to have their own volume. Yeah, cause... I mean, that's mostly whenever you see someone's new and expanded edition for a new uh, role-playing game at all. It's mostly just, we took our splat books from the other uh, edition and just put them into this one. Right. This book, this is a uh, D6 primary game. I think D6 is the only die you use. Yep, everything is based on D6, and it's all, like, D6 and then plus up to one or two or another D6. Right, so to raise a stat, for example, and there are, I forget, six stats, dexterity, knowledge, mechanical, perception, strength, and technical. Yeah, which I like that mechanical and technical and knowledge are all different stats. Right. I, I, it is sort of weird, isn't it? I guess it's just because wisdom didn't really fit that well into yeah, that Yeah, I mean, you basically just took intelligence and split it up into different skills. Which, it ends up working that way. The skill system in the book is interminable. Uh, it, it It's one of the, it's like so hard to read through. Yeah, well. I, I, I felt like I should have just read the first skill and then just been like, alright, I'll check any other ones I need later, <laughs> later on in my life. Uh, anyway, there are these six stats, and they range, on average, between one die and four dice, but there are occasionally exceptionally strong people who can get up to five or six, or smart yeah. people. The, and the way that everything in the game works is you roll the set number of dice that's usually equal to your uh, stat, your attribute, plus an ability. Uh, so, for example, if you have blaster skill at two dice, at plus two dice, and you have a dexterity skill of two dice, then you, you roll four dice yeah. and compare that against a target number. And your general skills and stats don't just go up by dice. They'll go up by, uh, they just call it pips. Yeah. So, uh, instead of going straight from two dice to three dice, you would go two dice plus one, two dice plus two, and then three dice. Yes. So, uh, there's points where you, and a lot of things top out at, at a set number of dice plus like two, for example. Like, uh, you know, a Wookiee can't get smarter than, than three dice plus two. Yeah, well, and that's the uh, the general maximum. And then if you go beyond whatever the uh, normal maximum for whatever your race is, it's you have species, a chance sir. to just not get it. So, you know, normally a human can go up to four dice. Mm -hmm. That's their, any given stat, they can get up to four dice in. If you want to go to four dice plus one, you can spend the, uh, your XP in this game for it. And then you have to roll. And if your number ends up being like the, whatever the GM rolls a number of dice equal to whatever your maximum is. Mm -hmm. And then you roll a number of dice as whatever you are trying to get. And if you roll more than what he rolled, then you don't get it, and you just waste XP. You get nothing. There's a couple times where the uh, the DM is encouraged to generate a random difficulty for tasks, um, <laughs> which is it's, it's similar. Like it says, okay, maybe you maybe you as the game master of this do not know how difficult it is to repair a speeder bike. So take the uh, number of dice that you would like, say five, roll them, and then that's the difficulty. Okay, well, why didn't you just set that at the average of whatever that is? It's 15. Yeah, it's it's sort of odd that the game 
the difficulty curve for things is you've got your, like, this is easy, this is normal, difficult, and so on, but it's all just number ranges. Mm -hmm. And it makes it so that, I mean, given the average human is two dice. So your average roll is going to be seven, but an, like, an easy, even an easy roll is, like, up to ten, which means your average human doesn't accomplish anything in a day. Yeah, that is a weird thing that they use difficulty ranges. So, like, easy is from 7 to 10. Moderate is from 11 to 14. Or 14. Difficult is from 15 to 18 or something like that. Yeah, and then... It, it, it's weird because... And, and then it says, well, you as the game master should go in and determine which one of those four numbers in that, that subset you would like the difficulty rating to be. It, it just seems like it's unnecessary to have a, a, such a fluid system. I mean... Just, you know, if it's moderate, it's a 15. There you go. Yeah, I mean, it gives you at least some leeway to be like, all right, well, it's hard, but it's not going to be a 20. It's going to be, a, you know, 17 or something. Whatever. All right. Like, you want them to maybe succeed on it a little more. But even then, it just... There's a lot of GM discretion for how hard something is because it's just sort of a giant range of numbers. This book came out in 1996, but it I, I swear to you, the whole way I was reading through it... I, okay, I knew it was going to be a 90s book because it mentions a lot of expanded universe Star Wars nonsense. Woo! Which, I, I know a lot about expanded universe Star Wars junk, and I don't believe John could care. I, I don't believe I could. Like, at gunpoint. If I was like, John, I'm pointing a gun at you. Do you care about Mara Jade? Uh, how's that bullet doing? <laughs> When's that gonna get here? Because <laughs> that gonna be a thing that happens? Because I don't want to talk about no gree or, <laughs> or whatever. So uh, I know a little bit about it because I was a teenager in the mid '90s, and that was something I could read, and it was garbage. Um, <laughs> so the book mentions some of that. So that's how I know when the book's coming out. But the sensibilities of the book are pure '80s gamer versus DM. Well, it's it's very much. West End Games didn't change their book structure ever. Yeah. And so since West End Games was out, they're like, you know what? This is good enough. Fuck you. There's a, there's a portion of the book, and, and we're skipping around, and we'll, we'll probably get back on track at some point, I'm sure. But there's a point in the book where it mentions, it, it's got a little description for what happens if your party gets a cool weapon for their, for their ship. It says, if your player's party gets a big, cool quad turbo laser for their ship, you should make sure to punish them by having it so every time they turn the turbo laser on, another part of their ship breaks. <laughs> yes, congratulations, you managed to scrounge up the credits to get something fun. Fuck your fun. I am the GM fun police and I am here to pull you over. It's, it's, uh, it's kind of, I can't imagine, I, I, I say I can't imagine a DM doing that, but this is a game I played. Huh. In, uh, like 95, 96. <laughs> I played this game in high school with a couple of buddies, and sure enough, they, they took every word in this thing to heart. Uh, the guy who was running it was deathly afraid that anyone would try and play a Jedi, because those are overpowered. Uh, <laughs> he was So everyone was playing as just like dirt farmer smuggler types, and sure enough, you know, the, the ship had to be terrible, because what if it was overpowered? Yeah, what if? I, I don't understand. What, why does the book think that your party could be overpowered? How does that a thing? Like, okay, your party gets a crazy good ship. Great, better enemies come at you. The end. That's. It's not like it's a video game, and there's people on the other uh, or in another city that you're playing against. Yeah, it's. It is an odd mentality that shows up in any game that doesn't have that sort of D and D progression of here's level three mobs, here's level five mobs, and so on. Yeah. If your group just happens to go, well, we got some weird end game level ship that's just super fucking awesome at everything. Then the fear for most GMs, I assume, that they had was like, oh, well, now he's just going to go, like, blow up Jabba's palace because he can. You're like, well, I mean, maybe, but maybe that's a cool fucking story and maybe you should let your players try that. Actually, there's a section for what happens if your players try to do something interesting in the book. <laughs> there's, in, in, in the, the sidebar just says, don't in, let in, them. In the big section of how to run the game, there's one for, it. basically, it's a Q&A, and one of the questions is, what if your players just want to go to Bespin? And it says, well, your players should should uh, experience the illusion of choice. <laughs> they should want to go to Bespin, but as they get to their ship, a, a security official should come out and say, well, that ship looks terrible. Was it chewed by Minox? You'll better come with me. We need to pay some taxes. <laughs> that way, they get a new story about how they have to go sit in an office, and they don't go to Bespin, which is what they were planning on doing. Everybody wins! Yay! Everyone's happy when they fill out forms in triplicate instead of going to some cool, awesome city. 
Yeah, some floating cloud city over Fart yeah. Planet. I, I, Dude, Fart Planet is the best planet. You shut your whore mouth. Fart Planet with its shoe ships. Ah, <laughs> oh, the great shoe ships of Fart Planet B. <laughs> and that is my opinion of the expanded universe, essentially in a nutshell. <laughs> the, the great shoe ships of Fart Planet B is what I imagine every expanded universe book is. Will Leia finally find love amidst <laughs> the shoe ships? Yeah, no, I, uh, I, I hate it, and I'm glad I never read it. <laughs> Fair enough. You're not far off the mark, to be honest. I mean, except the problem is that Shoe Ships of Heart Planet is new, and none of the Expanded Universe stuff was ever new. Oh, yeah. It was just like, either Luke gets more badass, or someone Luke-like gets more badass, or a minor shitty costume that was in the movie for a second is revealed to be a major Imperial hero or something. Oh, yeah, no, I mean, I assume, my assumption for the Expanded Universe is it basically is either... We inserted a Mary Sue who is best friends with Han Solo, or Han Solo does something because I want to show how badass Han Solo is, or Duke Blywalker shows up and does something great. <laughs> yeah, I wish it was like that, but a lot of the books were more like, hey, you remember that wolf guy that's briefly in the cantina? For... Wolfman Jack? Yeah. 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 It, it, yeah. He's, he's in the movie for a split second, and it's clearly a cheap werewolf mask. Well, what if he was a rad X-Wing pir- pilot? Pilot. <laughs> That's that's the kind of thing the expanded universe uh, was. It, it implied basically that the main characters never met anyone who wasn't an awesome hero. Yeah, which is kind of weird. That instead of introducing new people, they'd be like, "Yeah, that guy in that cantina, or that guy in Jabba's palace. Let's give him a huge backstory." No one in this universe is just a chump. Yeah, eh, no, whatever. I don't care if you were just some dude who died screaming for two seconds. No, you had an entire life behind you. Mm -hmm. You had a family and kids, and And, then you were cut down. And you probably survive your dying screaming in terror. Like, like, uh, Lord knows that the Expanded Universe books made sure to bring Boba Fett back. (laughs) Yeah, no, we can't have that guy die. That guy's too awesome. He had a helmet and a jetpack. That's it, though, right? I mean, yeah, it's an emperor has no clothes thing. Come on. (laughs) What did Boba Fett ever do that was cool? He hid in garbage. He stood around. He flew Han Solo's body to a place. He stood around some more. And then he got beat like a bitch. By a guy who didn't know he was there. Yeah, he, he literally got beat up by a blind dude. He sucks. I, I hate to say it, because I mean, Boba Fett does look legitimately cool. It's a great costume. But never once does he do anything cool. Yeah, I'm pretty sure his perception was 1D plus 1 getting back to this game. Oh, right. We have a game we're talking about. <laughs> Oh. All right, so yeah, there's there's six stats. You have some abilities that you can use, and if you try to go above your species maximum, you might just spend XP for fucking nothing. Yay! Yay! I'm it's... glad that we had that in this game. Okay, so the way that you pick careers in this game is that you choose from a series of templates for careers that exist. Yeah, which or you build let me your own. let me once again say how much I fucking hate this book because of its editing. Sure, the layout in this book is awful in that it goes through this entire description of like. This is how you create a character. You're going to want to get a template, and you'll pick this template, and maybe you didn't pick a template, or maybe you did, and here's how you adjust a template, and so on and so on. It talks about templates, and then templates is... That's in, like, chapter two, and then the actual templates that you pick from are the end of the book. Yep. The- I'm like, what the fuck? Don't just tell me about how I make a character and then delay the thing that lets me make a character to the end of the book. Chapter 15 of this book is alien races that you can play as. Ugh. God, it's so annoying to me. That's yeah. just a layout issue, but It, it does have, oh, whatever, we're reviewing a role-playing game, we can discuss whether or not it's got a good layout. This and one, it doesn't. This one really doesn't. It's- also, the <laughs> the thing that it gives for players that's like, here's the overview of how the game works. It's a choose-your-own-adventure. It's, it's all tilted to the side. It's like, it looks like a piece of paper on a background, but instead of it being straight up, it's just tilted to the left. So trying to read it, you kind of have your head crooked to the left. So getting through that section, I'm like, ah, my neck hurts. And there's a, a lot of uh, choose-your-own-adventure storyline. Which... Well, yeah, that was a big West End Games thing of like, here, let's run you through a single-player version of the game. And, and the funny thing is that the choose-your-own-adventure is very railroady. Like, you get to make three choices at a, a variety of places, but... Like, it's like... Well, it's all, did you fail this perception check? Go to 18. Did you make it? Go to 20. Well, there's one where you walk up to the bar, and the guy behind the bar tells you that you can't have your blaster. And you have three choices. You can point your blaster at him, you can give him your blaster, or you can ignore him and try to buy a drink. (laughs) Um, 
And all three of them result in him going, ha, 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 I like your style. <laughs> and then some other lady nearby goes, why don't you come have a seat? Yay. So, yeah, it's not a very choose your own adventure adventure. But whatever, they're just setting you up for how they want the DM to run the game anyway. Yeah. So, <laughs> which is, fuck you, I'm going to do whatever the hell I want, yep. and I don't care what your input is. There you go. So, uh, okay, Jedi in this game. Are there any? Uh, technically, it's like, it's sort of difficult to be a Jedi, not in that, like, because it's all point by system, you start out with, uh, 18 dice worth of stats to put into your stats. Mm -hmm. And so you can, you know, just give yourself whatever stats you want. So it's not that it's difficult to be a Jedi because it's like the old having to roll really well to be a paladin. Yeah. But it's mostly just that trying to do anything as a Jedi is sort of difficult. Yeah, it, okay, so there's two kind of stunt mechanics that exist in this game, or oops mechanics, or whatever. There's character points, which... Which are your XP as well as your I don't want to fuck up points. Yeah, you can spend them to uh, boost your abilities and attributes, or you can use them in short term for short-term gain. Like, for example, if you use them on an attribute roll, then you get an extra die. Yeah. Uh, that, that sort of thing. So but it is straight up trading in character growth for an immediate benefit, because it is XP. Yeah, you can also spend them to not die. And we'll talk later about how the combat system in this game is. It's it's interesting. Uh, okay, so the other one is is uh, force points. Yeah. And force points represent the Jedi power what's up in you. And everybody has them. Even if you aren't Jedi, everyone can sort of subconsciously draw upon the force. Mm -hmm. So you get people that are like, I'm just some smuggler but I'm in a dire situation and you spend your force point, you double your die pool for whatever you spend your force point on, and hooray, you, without knowing, told the force to help you out. Great. Yep. And oddly enough, force points don't have that much to do with being a Jedi. No, you get an extra force point if you're force sensitive. Yes. But other than that, it's just sort of a die adder. Yeah, and, and uh, they have the capacity to have more force points. Uh, you can, you can have as many force points as you earn if you're, if you're force sensitive. If you're not force sensitive, you can never have more than two, I think is the total. Yeah. And you start with one. Although there's no way to earn them that I, I found. I, uh, it's basically just GM candy. Yeah, basically. It's really weird though, because there's like, okay, there's ways to lose them. You can spend them the way you're supposed to spend them to get effects from spending them. Uh, you can lose them for doing not light side things. So like, if you, if you, uh, for example, use one of your Jedi powers for selfish gain or, uh, you know, it, without it not being at risk to life and your limb of your own or something like that. It's it's kind of, it's very much like the old second edition Paladin code from D&D &D where it was like, you know, basically encouraging the DM to fuck with the player. Yeah, and the only real way to get them back is you have to be heroic in some way that's like super awesome. So maybe you... Uh, try to hold things off while everyone else is getting away, or basically put yourself in harm's way and act super non-selfish and whatnot, then the, the GM can go, hey man, great. Or, if you do something super awesome and cool, and the GM can just go, you know what, you get a force point and you have to spend it on that immediately because I think it was super awesome. So here's, here's the weird thing. If you, uh, if you're all super heroic and cool, the only way you can get a force point back from that is, if you spent one to be super heroic and cool. The the rule says that you can get a force point back if you did something super heroic with your force point. The only other way to get a force point is to do so something super heroic while you don't have any force yeah. points, which means you can never get above your starting maximum unless the GM bends the rules and gives you extras. Yeah, I mean, basically, if you do something crazy awesome, then your GM can basically... Say no, it's yes. it's. I mean, he can. It, uh, he can. Yeah, sure, but he could also just say that you turn into a banana. It, 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 <laughs> but well, I'm pretty sure that was yeah. the, in the expanded yeah, universe it's, it's, too. It's, it's it's the intent of the rules. I it, I don't know what you really were reading. spirit of yeah. the rules here. The spirit, I'm pretty sure the spirit of the rules says that you should turn your players into bananas. <laughs> I, I'm not, I, I, it's clear. It's very clear to me. Yeah. No, but it we does. We can all read between it, the lines. It says multiple times throughout the paragraph, if the, if the character has no force points when they do this awesome thing, you may choose to give them one. Like, okay, well, how do they get above one then? It, what, it doesn't matter. It, so, that, force points are basically a die doubler that you can use to get to super high rolls. The only other way to get to some of the super difficulties, cause, you know, on average, you're rolling maybe four or five dice. Yeah. Um, 
you can get as many as six dice. You can double them with that. The the only other way to get up there is that there's a single die in your pool every time you roll the dice that's called the wild die. Ah, oh, yes, the wild die, which West End Games was really big on throwing that in. We re- reviewed Ghost uh, Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters a while ago, which had the ghost, ghost die. die. Yeah. And this is sort of the same thing, except it isn't just punishing. It actually is good for you. It's really weird, though. Okay, so if you roll a six on your wild die, then you add six to your total, for, which is good because it's an additive game. And then you roll another d6, and it, it continues to explode like that. If you roll a 6, you add another d6, and so on. Uh, it can, it, there's no end to that. You basically roll 6s until you no longer roll a 6. Yeah. If you roll a 1, then one of three things happens. And this this is really weird to me. <laughs> there's three things that can happen. One of them is nothing happens. You add the 1 to your total and count your total up, and that's fine. The second one is you remove the 1 from your total, also remove the highest die from your total, and see if your uh, remaining crappy dice are enough to get you over the skill. The third one is, something crazy happens. It's a weird fumble where you shoot and you accidentally hit one of your teammates or something. Now, how do you choose which one of these three things happens? Uh, you don't. The GM does at random. He just chooses them however he wants. Yeah, so it might be, you're like, oh, I made a roll for some stupid bullshit, and I got a one. Okay, well, uh, I guess I don't care as the GM, so I just drop it, whatever. And then it might be that you end up having, like, you have a role to fight my cool, awesome, badass NPC, and oh, you would hit him, and it would be really powerful, but you roll the one on that wild die, so fuck you, you shoot yourself in the dick instead. It's one of those, and we've, I've talked about this before, the are you going to be a dick today rules, <laughs> where, uh, you know, as the player, you're going to be looking your, at your GM when you roll that one in your wild die, and you're just going to be looking at him like, are you going to be a dick today? Yeah, the fact that it isn't just a hard and fast rule of, if you roll a one, then you remove that and the highest die, and you go, wow, that would suck. Okay, but at least it's a rule. Yeah. The fact that it's there of either you get to add one to your roll, or you subtract up to seven from your roll, means that every time you roll that wild die and it comes up a one, you're just like, oh man, oh don't you fucking do it. What's it gonna be, Jerry? You gonna be a dick this time? And the problem is, either your GM is super in that adversarial mode where he's like, yeah, of course I am, fuck you, get rid of those dice. The game says that you might be overpowered at any time. So, you know what, get rid of it. Or you might have a guy who's like, I just seriously don't care, and every time you roll a one, you just add it, and the wild die is only good for you. Or it can fluctuate wildly based on whether or not you've touched his pizza. (laughs) Yes. Yes, it could. (laughs) Had you touched the DM's pizza then woe his wrath may be upon ye. You might remove the two highest dice. Yeah, that might happen. Just maybe. (laughs) Okay. So, uh, now, beyond that, force powers in this game are, like, kind of static. They're like spells. There's, like, you know, project or projected telepathy and telekinesis and sensing things and so on. There's no force mana. There's no, like, uh, memorization. You can no, just you use do not have Vancey and force casting. Yeah. I don't force push a guy and then forget how to force push. Yeah, you don't use Big B's forceful force. <laughs> uh, but no, in, instead, it's a skill that you learn. So, for example, telekinesis is a skill that you learn that requires two of three force categories, and each one of those is a skill. There's alter, sense, and control. And uh, each one of those you're going to have a different rating in. And to use just a sense power, like, for example, to... Oh, is there someone else in the room? I'll, I'll roll my force sense. <laughs> uh, so you just roll your sense and check that against the difficulty. But telekinesis requires sense and control. So you roll both of those and see if you succeeded at both of them. And then you get to use the telekinesis power. Yep. Essentially, being a Jedi means you are sacrificing other skills you could have put dice into in order to have access to some weird special powers. Yeah. And, uh, of course, you have to act like a total paladin all the time. Yeah. No, this game, if you do anything at all, and I mean, like, not even just within the bounds of what was allowed for Jedis in the movie, it is just like, if you are not acting like a goddamned angel, you will get fucked up and turn into, like, an NPC immediately. Yeah, because it actually says if you go dark side that your character is supposed to be taken away from you. We don't condone the playing of evil characters. Yeah. We're super afraid that maybe someone might have a personality, and so no. Yeah, I I don't understand why that... uh, Old games seem to be terrified that people might want to play the bad guys. It's Uh, weird to me that it wasn't until, like, the mid-90s that people were like, 
what if you want to play the vampire? Yeah, I think it was mostly trying to cover their own ass from the, like, oh. role-playing games are evil. And yeah. so they're like, no, no, you're never evil. No. Everyone's a shining knight of goodness, and if you if you act badly for even a second, we'll tell your parents and your character gets taken away. <laughs> I, you I, lose character privileges for three weeks. I, I guess. Um, the way that the uh, Jedi falling thing works is that you can't use your powers for personal gain or selfishly or to hurt people that don't deserve it, uh... Or anything along the, or, or even to trick people. You're not allowed to use them to just trick people. Yeah, I mean, like trying to tell someone that, like, the droids that they were looking for aren't those droids. That would be super dark side. Oh yeah, that's lying to someone. Oh my gosh. Or for example, telling someone that you're there to see Jabba and that Jabba is expecting you. Yeah, that's, that would be super dark side. That is what a dark side. Or, or for example, telling a, a kid that you're training that you knew his dad and that his dad died, <laughs> uh, a hero, and and so on, instead of that your dad is currently Darth Vader, that would be a dark side thing to do to that yeah, kid. No, you're any to any of these character examples we gave would be evil people. Yeah, bad guys. So, um, so yeah, don't play like them. Don't play like any of these characters who I, I'm not sure who we're talking about. Yeah, I'm, I, it must be some expanded universe bullshit. Data. <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how Data and Worf are. <laughs> so here's what happens if you do use your powers for selfish gain. You get a dark side point. Woo! You can spend a dark side point the same way you would spend a light side point. It, it doubles your die pool and so on, and it's super awesome when you get it. But if you do, then you have to roll to see if you become an evil Jedi. And, so, and you probably do. Also, you're allowed to not use your dark side point when it's offered to you. The DM is encouraged to go, hey, you want a dark side point for doing an evil uh, thing? Uh, and then you want a cookie? And then you can say, oh, yes, I would love to double my dice to kill that guy or whatever and, and risk going to the dark side. Or you can say no. However, if you say I don't want it, the DM is encouraged to tell you, no, you're supposed to take it. <laughs> you, you have to take it because you would take it because it would be stupid for you not to. Uh, I, I, again, the game will happily wrest control of your character if it fucks your character up a little bit. Yeah, anything that will possibly make it so that you aren't this crazy, overpowered character that I guess that you are, then by God, we will do that. Yeah, so, who knows. Okay, so, you have to choose from these templates. The templates are mostly kind of starting characters. You know, you have your smuggler, traitor, soldier, that kind of thing. Yeah, you've got some, a few of the, like, failed Jedi, so you're an old dude who remembers back in the day when there were Jedi, and it's, you failed out of the academy. Yeah, it's supposed to help you understand why your character is, is a shitty starting Jedi, or why he's still alive. Yeah. Because the game is... It, it it lets you set the game any point in Star Wars history you'd like to, and of course not Episode One because that came out three years after this book. But um, it will let you set it in the you know distant past or the right between two of the the uh, the original movies or immediately after the original movies. But it's pretty clearly set at a point where like the Emperor is still alive. Yeah, it's sort of. I guess it it feels like it wants to take place during Empire. Yeah, it's either during Empire or immediately after Empire, and. And, again, as an expanded universe d uh, dork, I know that between Empire and Return of the Jedi, there's like 18 months of shenanigans, <laughs> in including a big green kung fu dude named Prince Shizor. Oh, God, everything you are saying is awful. I, I hate everything about it. That book drove me insane. I think that might have been the book that broke me from reading those garbage books. Um, but anyway, so, uh, yeah, there's like 18 months there during which you can go off and be your own crazy heroes. Now, the book does take a moment to point out to you that you're not Luke Skywalker and Han Solo, so let's not get big plans or anything. Yeah, I hate any, not just this one, but any book that is based on a license that sets itself during the time of the events in that license and that you aren't as good as them. So it's like, hey, here's, you know, the main cast of Firefly. They're all super experienced and badass. You are on a shittier ship. And you are a shittier smuggler. Fuck you. Would you like to play as Luke's crappy cousin? Maybe you're an X-Wing pilot. You probably fucking die. Because, <laughs> I don't know, you're in Yellow Squadron and they can eat a dick. I'm playing as Sherlock Holmes' brother. Not Mycroft, the younger one who got hit on the head real hard when he was a kid. Yay! This yes, is, this I'm is... playing as Minecraft Holmes. <laughs> Minecraft Holmes. Oh man, that's a great idea right hey, there. We should make yeah. that, let's make that happen. Oh, Million dollar idea! Probably already taken. <laughs> so, uh, okay. 
you you make a dirt farmer. And to me, ever as I was reading through this book, it was reminding me of the MMO Star Wars Galaxies. Yeah, which really West End game Star Wars is just galaxies for dumb babies. Okay, so if you're not a big MMO person, there are two Star Wars MMOs. One of them is modern and it's still available. Uh, it, uh, Star Wars: The Old Republic. And it play, it's basically World of Warcraft Star Wars. It's very similar. It's got a similar look and feel and play style. Uh, Star Wars Galaxies was like an EverQuest clone. Uh, so it's really old. And you play as a shitty, crappy fuck. Like, you're just... The, <laughs> like, literally, your character cannot beat a rabbit unless he's listened to a, a, a uh, like, hooker sing to him for, for five minutes and visited a doctor. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm not joking. That's That's how that game is. No, it, it is it is just a big old pile of nonsense. You play as like a crappy space peasant who lives on a shit farm and farms crap out of the shit dirt for <laughs> forever. You keep thinking it's gonna get great and it doesn't. And and so that's and I played it in the beta, so that's I, I've always felt about or I've always felt strongly about it. So reading this, it was bringing back some horrible memories for me of like, oh, I don't want to play as a shitty crappy peon in the Star Wars universe. That would be garbage. Yeah, if so, I'm playing as a guy who's like, what are you? I don't know, maybe I can fly a thing, but I'm probably not very good, and if the Empire stops me for any reason, I will probably shit my pants and die. Yeah, that's that's what this is. You play as Jimmy Fuckstick, the, <laughs> the guy who can't hold a gun. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I mean, it's not that bad. It's not as bad as Galaxies. No. Uh, but but it still it reminds me of that, because it keeps making these little allusions to how you're not quite Han Solo. He's better than you. You can play as Blaine Handsome, who is... What is that? That's an anagram for Han Solo for some reason. Han Solo eats dicks. Or so. <laughs> uh, but it's it's sort of odd. And the the way in which you do things, being better at it doesn't necessarily make you better at using it. It just lets you use better items. So, like, a lightsaber is super difficult to use, and if you aren't, like, five or six dice worth of good at using a lightsaber, you are probably just going to chop your own goddamn arm off. Yeah. You idiot, quit using oh, yeah. a lightsaber. If, if you fail with a lightsaber by more than ten, then you do the same damage you would have dealt to them to yourself. Yeah. And the... Remember the that com- in the movies? The combat rules, each weapon has a difficulty to it. Mm-hmm. So trying to use any given weapon will be more and more difficult in order to do anything. Yeah, I remember that that awesome part in the movies where one of the uh, Republic storm tro- or uh, troop guys on uh, the ship at the beginning tried to fire his gun and couldn't because he was too crappy. Yeah, no, that's that's basically stormtroopers. Yeah, is they're all just shooting and using West End game rules and shooting into the air at nothing. I also remember that part where Qui Gon Jinn cuts his own hand real bad. <laughs> And he's like, ow, damn it, I should get better with this thing. <laughs> uh, it's it's kind of weird. Like, I think lightsaber is the most difficult thing to use yeah. at 5D. So you need to pass a check that's five dice of difficulty in order to even have a chance to hit a guy. And then the other guy is going to try and dodge. Parry. He has to parry because this well, game- this game uses parry for melee attacks and dodge for ranged attacks, and they're they're very clear that you can't use one for the other. Yeah, it's, well, you can if you're a Jedi with a lightsaber. You can parry a ranged attack oh, because right, yeah. fuck you, yeah. I'm and I've th- got a lightsaber. And then you can make an additional moderate melee or a control attack or something to deflect the uh, the blast to someone else. Yeah, no, it it lets you do some goofy things, but it's so difficult. Yeah. That unless you have been playing this game forever and never used your character points to stop yourself from fucking up so that you can actually get extra points and things, there's then a, maybe. There's a force power called concentration, and it's it's a sense power, and it's just sort of, you sit there and concentrate for a second before you do a skill, and it makes you better at that skill. So sure, it's supposed to be the equivalent of when Luke shot the, uh, the photon torpedoes and blew up the first Death Star. Yeah, he is using yeah. the Force. He's sitting there and using the Force, and he's not doing anything else. He's just Force-using, although I guess he is also flying through a trench, which is probably fairly difficult. <laughs> but moving on, the way this, the power works is you, uh, you activate control by rolling a medium difficulty uh, control check or sense check, and if you succeed at that, then you get to roll the skill that you were going to do once, the same turn only, at a plus four bonus. Which sounds great. Oh, plus four dice to yeah. my skill. It's actually plus three because to use the uh, the control power, the uh, concentrate power, you have to split your action, which gives you a minus one die to everything you do that turn. 
including the skill that you would otherwise have gotten a bonus to. Yeah. It... Splitting actions in this actually gets super punishing. Yeah. Because losing a whole die to doing something is really bad when you only have, like, even most of the uh, characters that they show in there, I think the most anyone has at anything is five dice. Yeah. So, for example, if you want to fire a blaster at a stormtrooper while diving behind some barrels, that's two actions. Uh, you're going to roll an acrobatics or a dexterity check for one of them, and you're going to roll your firing check. Both of them are going to suffer minus one die because you're splitting your action into two things. If you wanted to dive behind some barrels and shoot a stormtrooper, and think about your taxes, now you're doing three actions, so you have a minus two to all three of them. And so on. And it's really funny to me that they meant that during this concentration ability, they specifically reference Luke's trench battle sequence, where it's like, you can only do this if you're focusing entirely and concentrating on one thing and not dodging enemy fire and not running down a hallway. And I was like, oh, well, what if you, for example, are flying an X-Wing down a dangerous, narrow trench while Darth Vader shoots at you? Is that one thing or no? <laughs> you crap-ass game. Uh, yeah, it tries to do a lot of the, simu simulate a lot of the things from the movies. So, like the concentrating, uh, like the deflecting blasts, all of that. It tries to give you the ability to do anything you saw in the movies, but then it is also afraid that you will do anything that you saw in those movies, so it makes it almost impossible. Yeah, try to be like Luke Skywalker. Probably fail the game. Yeah, it just, again, it comes down to the fact that almost anything that you want to do is going to be, like, at most, four to five dice. And at that point, your average roll is going to make you succeed at, like, medium to the low end of difficult. Right. Which means anything that goes to normal difficult to very difficult is just not going to happen. Yeah. Ever. Okay, so to hit a guy in this game, like let's say you just have a bat and you want to punch a guy with it, or swing it at a guy. You roll your bat skill, Yay. he rolls his his parry skill against bats, then if you hit him, you roll your damage, and then he rolls his strength to resist damage. So it's four rolls to see how much damage you inflict on a guy when you swing at him, which is a few too many. Um, and that's that's current, that's how the skill system works from start to finish. There's also a bunch of things that tell you how long various skills take. Uh, one of my favorites is that if you play as an Ithorian, which, if you've seen the movies, it's that big slug thing that's in the cantina in the first one. Yeah, that hammerhead shark-looking motherfucker. Yeah, that guy. Uh, they have a special power of ecology. It's a skill they have because they live on a planet where they don't even touch the ground because they worship it too much. So uh, they, they live on ships that fly above the ground and uh, whatever. That's, that's nerdy stuff about Ithorians. They are very, very good at ecology. So there is a skill that they have for ecology where you can use your skill to determine what a thing you're looking at's place in the ecosystem is. Like, you can tell if it's a predator, or if it's a tree, or how it how it interacts with the ecosystem. Maybe you might be able to figure out what its diet is and so on. Uh, the time it takes for you to use this skill is one month. <laughs> uh, yeah. One month. So, for example, should your Ithorian character be chased by a rancor... Uh, and his friend's like, what is that thing? He can go, oh, I'll tell you. And then a month later, as they continue to run from the Rancor, he'll go, it's a predator of some kind. <laughs> yeah, I I really enjoy the the image to me of some fucking alien sitting there doing, like, gorillas in the mist. And after a month goes, I think they're mammals. <laughs> that might be some sort of tree. <laughs> it's sort some sort of social furry plant. You had me at social furry. <laughs> yeah, it's some sort of social furry, which makes it really rare. It's some sort of furry social. We should probably <laughs> leave this planet. <laughs> Except you've been there for a month, so you've probably got all sorts of goo on you now. Oh, crap. <laughs> Why did I go to planet Yif? <laughs> okay, uh, so um, there you go. Uh, if you take damage in this game, don't uh, fear not. That sucks. You don't have any hit points. Uh, no one does. Instead, you have damage levels. Yeah, you've got like, the sort of health track that you'd see in most games that don't have HP. Except that instead of earning extra points on the health track, you know how like in Exalted you have like minus ones, and minus twos, and minus fours, and you can get more minus twos. Yeah. And this one you've got like lightly scratched, wounded, incapacitated, and dead. Uh, and the way they work is when someone rolls to damage you, you check how much they beat you by on their damage roll over, like, your ability to resist damage. And then that number tells you if 
what level of injured you are. So, for example, if you are mildly scraped, then you simply suffer a minus one die penalty to your actions for a round. If you're wounded, you fall to the ground and can't take actions that turn, but you can get back up. If you're incapacitated, you're unconscious, and if you're mortally wounded, then you're unconscious and you're bleeding to death. Yeah. And you get... I think it's a total of five. So you have your lightly scratched, two levels of wounded, incapacitated, and oh fuck. Mortally wounded, yeah. And... Then, of course, it has our favorite mechanic ever, which is healing long, time. Long, slow healing time. Woo! You don't even get to make a roll for several days at the low end of wounded. So it's three days, and then you can roll. If you fuck that roll up... If you get a four or less... You might just become the next level of wounded. And you're like, ow, man, that guy cut me. And then three days later, you're like... Oh, fuck, why have I been grabbing this cut and ripping at it? <laughs> Got infected, I guess. There's a, if you're mortally wounded or incapacitated, there's a chance you can, after waiting a month for mortally wounded, before you're even allowed to make a roll, after waiting 35 days, you can, you can roll and die. Yep. <laughs> you can, after 35 days of sitting around in some sort of tank somewhere, trying to not be dead, you're like, ah, oh, finally. Ah, uh, it's been a month, but I can roll. And now, well, oh, it's a good thing we waited that month because now I get a new character. I would love to see that play session where either you roll that or you roll a seven or, or between a, a four and a seven where you just stay mortally wounded for another 35 days before you can roll again. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, man, I've skipped three sessions, but it was worth it because I really like my dirt smuggler. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to roll to see if he's alive. Oh, he stays mortally wounded. Well, I'm going to take three more sessions to copy random letters out of the dictionary, <laughs> and I'll check in with you guys. No, this will never happen. Your DM will go, and you miraculously get better. The end. We want the adventures to continue. I I, I hate I, old games always do this. No, I, honestly, even new games yeah. still have the, and here's how long it takes for you to heal. At least the new games generally don't have a chart where you can get more <laughs> fucked up. Just die later. <laughs> like... <laughs> No modern game is like, you got a paper cut, and oh shit, that turned into a gaping chest wound. <laughs> I Actually, I really enjoy the concept that uh, your DM makes that check, and then he might call you at home one day, and be like, Jerry, I'm real sorry, I rolled for your character, but, but Figrin Don has died. Uh, you can either make a new character, or I'm afraid you're out of the session. Uh, yeah. And the fact that you can keep doing it, like, you can go from... I was lightly wounded all the way to dead. Yeah. If you just fuck up every roll. Just keep rolling fours and your light scrape you got from a playful round of fighting with someone <laughs> could kill you. Yeah. Like, someone sparred with you, they gave you a bloody nose, and then you just swallowed all of your blood forever. Yeah, like it, like in Star Wars, where, uh, where one of the Ewoks got briefly injured during a scuffle with one of the stormtroopers, and then we follow him for several months as he deteriorates <laughs> and dies. <laughs> Remember that part of the movie? Yeah, hey, you remember it gets, that? It gets real deep and dark, and he's like, he goes through the five stages of grief, and you see his kid just crying yeah. over him as his father will not heal. <laughs> Obviously, the spirits of their ancestors torment him. Yeah, they feed him a bunch of tree sap from a mystic tree that only one of their chief medicine men knows about. They keep but, trying to eat sentient beings just to make him feel better, but, but that doesn't work. It's all to no avail, and then he dies. Yeah. Yeah, but then his son his son does meet a cute Ewok girl at the funeral, and they have a little meet cute, and that's nice. That's it's good. It's, it's a circle of life. Yeah. Uh, no, none of this happens. Why would you put that in a Star Wars game? <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> so... Also, there are ways to get faster healing. There's med packs and back to tanks, just like Star Wars. There's presumably droids that poke at your hand after they give you a cool <laughs> bionic one. All the cool medical stuff you remember. Yeah. Uh, now, you could even play as a medical droid, because Woo! there's a whole section on how droids work, and you can play as them. <laughs> and in the little play example section, there's a character who's playing as a C-3PO thing. He's just like a prissy, non-combat... Yeah, he's a, he's a horrible protocol droid. Yeah, he's just a shitty protocol droid. He's just like, I don't think we should go in that bar. I think it might be dirty in there. <laughs> yeah, and even the sec... Like, there's the template for being a protocol droid, and the entire thing is like, you do not like to have fun or adventures or good times. You should try to stop the party from having any of these. I just, I just... Why would you play as one? I, I feel like there's only so much C-3PO you can take even in the movies. Like, just imagine playing as him. He's like, I, I've been late for spin class for the past three sessions, Master. 
<laughs> Where are you going? You can't go on an adventure. I made all this paella. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I'm not quite sure who that is for, but you know what? It's not like anyone else in this game is playing someone awesome, so I, you may as well. It's true. <laughs> and the example for how to make a droid has a guy rolling to make that probe droid from the beginning of Empire. Like, I want to play as that, a floating beeping thing that Chewbacca shoots. <laughs> you, you want to play as Frimit on the Frim Fram? <laughs> Frim it on the fram. <laughs> yes, that's me. <laughs> so, okay, so uh, you make an alien or a droid or something, and you take it on rad Star Wars adventures. Yep, super, super duper rad Star Wars adventures where you die immediately. Now, uh, there is a bunch of gear to choose from in this game. Yeah. There is the Corellian YT-1300 light freighter, which you would know as the Millennium Falcon. Yep, which uh, it turns never out showed ever. up yeah. anywhere else in the movie's... At all, but apparently they're fucking everywhere. Yeah, it's the it's the uh, Dodge Neon of of uh, <laughs> Star Wars. Is there's just thirteen YT thirteen hundreds every damn where. His just happened to be heavily modified. You know what's fun about this one is that this has a uh, answer to the stupid Kessel Run line oh. from before they came out with an official answer. Because you know the Kessel Run line. Yeah. He says he makes it in some number of parsecs, which is a unit of distance. Yeah. Uh, in this, they explain that his ship is faster because it has a ridiculous double fast hyperdrive. That it's actually got a faster hyperdrive than star destroyers and stuff. Oh boy. They they uh, they go ahead and incorporate parsec as a unit of time instead of a unit of distance. I, I guess. I mean, uh, the, the real answer is just as dumb. I don't know if you ever heard it. It's oh, he found a shortcut through black holes. He yeah. flies through a bunch of black holes without falling into any of them, like a to, like a total badass. And so he yeah. he uses less distance. We I, I okay, whatever. I, or or it could just be that Lucas didn't know what parsec was and thought it sounded cool. Oh well, yeah, I mean, it's honestly, got second, that, it sounds like second. That dude has been sitting around being your average character in a Star Wars RPG, and that he is a dirt farmer that sucks at everything. <laughs> What, George Lucas? <laughs> also, yes. George Lucas is the world's richest everything-sucking dirt farmer. <laughs> yep. I'll stand by that. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Come at me, Lucas. What do you got? You made three good movies once. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. Yeah. So, um, then there's a couple other ships you can get. You can get your X-Wings, A-Wings, the boob ship from uh, Cloud City. We were talking about that earlier. Uh, John thinks it looks like a flying pair of slippers. I think it looks like a 50s bra. <laughs> Tell us how you think it looks. Yeah. Does it look like a flying bee? It looks, certainly looks more like a flying bee than the B-Wing fighter does. That just looks like a flying cross. Well, fuck you. You don't know what things is. We, we also... No Slave 1. You can't get the Slave 1, even yeah. though it's the right size to be a ship that you could put a group in. And it's not even like you can't get the Slave 1. It doesn't even have the, this is the generic serial number filed off version Kuat of that. Drive, your, drive Yards Firebird 31 or some crazy thing. Yeah. Fire so, Spray. 31 Fire Spray. So you can't get that. Oh boy. Yeah, which is, it doesn't make sense, though, because they really want you to know about the YT-1300. Yeah, yeah but you, you can get the fucking, like, sand barge. <laughs> yeah, the two skiffs. The skiff and the sand barge. You can you can either get them or have fun adventures involved with them. Yeah. Or all of the Star Destroyers. They even have the stats with the Death Star in there, which is kind of cool. Yeah, no, it, it puts every single ship that had any screen time from the movies, except for Slave 1, for no reason. Which is weird, because Slave 1's the right size to matter. Yeah, it is the right size for a party to be in. Yeah, unusual. Oh, well, nah. what are you going to do? All right, so uh, let's get down to the brass tacks. John, did you enjoy uh, Star Wars? Uh, the movies? Yes. No, they're terrible for babies. <laughs> they're terrible for babies, but you enjoyed them. Yeah, no. <laughs> if you if you had a baby watch this, it would be awful. He wouldn't get all of the nuanced, wonderful <laughs> metaphors that are involved in this story. Shitty baby, you can't enjoy the cantina theme correctly. <laughs> get out of here, baby. <laughs> you don't understand Yoda's wisdom. Fuck you, baby. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was asking the wrong question anyway. John, what is your favorite thing about Star Wars, the West End Games RPG? Um... Oh, God. How complete their list of ships is, I guess. <laughs> you really don't like, have, you I'm have, stretching here. I'm trying to find okay. something that I don't just hate. Let's get this out. This game's not terrible. Like, you could play this game. It's it, if, you, if you strip the license off it and just use the RPG rules, they're not bad. It would make an okay game. It's just boring. It's super boring, and I don't 
hate the mechanics, but I yeah. hate how they give them to you. Yeah, and... the book's layout is atrocious, but I don't even want to say that, because I know that's going to be your least favorite thing coming up. And the, the, the main issue I have with it is your starting character is just balls and everything. Yeah. So if your starting characters were actually able to do stuff, I would feel better about it, because the mechanics support someone that's decent being able to do something, but they start you out at such a low level that it it's kind of pointless trying to get anything done. Yeah, yeah. What's your least favorite thing? Ah, uh, the layout. There you go. The editing in this book is awful. The pictures are at stupid angles. And they keep reprinting the pictures. They reprint shit all the time. They have the worst sensibilities of where they should put things. It's like, hey, you might want to know about this. Did we put it right after the section of you might want to know about this? Of course we didn't. It's several chapters later. I mean, I already mentioned the templates being at the end of the book when the, like, second chapter is the one that talks about them. Yep. But it also goes on for a lot of, like, hey, maybe you might want to learn how to do fighting with all of these weapons. We will not tell you about that for another three chapters. It's yeah. just not laid out in a way that is conducive to, I'm reading this and everything flows such that I understand. You end up having to flip back and forth between a lot of different sections so it just ends up being this confused, jumbled fucking mess. Yeah. So, your favorite thing about the West End Star Wars expanded and fucking great second edition revised City of Violence. Edited for television. <laughs> uh, uh, come on, give I, me your favorite. All right, I give do, it to me. I do like that they dug pretty deep to get some of the cool Star Wars stuff to reference let you play as. Like, you can play as a bunch of interesting alien races, and it gives you the rules to create your own, uh, with suggestions of some of the weird ones from the the universe. The ones that the book comes with are weird. It comes with Sullistans. Well, yeah, I mean, it comes with the, the Wookiees and the Ewoks like you would expect. Yeah, but then it's got Sullistans, which are the little, uh, pit bull, wet looking dog face guy that helps, uh, helps, uh, Lando blow up the second Death Star. Yeah, you know. Mr. Jowly. Yeah, yeah, that guy. He looks like Mr. Little... Jowly. No, no, Jowly. Bow, bow, bow. This is all you. <laughs> um... You blew up the Death Star. All right, now I'm on board. <laughs> 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 now you got me. <laughs> he came back around. I came back. We went around to funny. Uh, you have those things. Uh, you have Gamorians. Remember yeah. the, the grunty pigmen from, uh, from Return of the Jedi? <laughs> Who can't wait to play one of those, right? Like, yeah. yeah. Uh, one note grunty pigmen with axes. Yeah. You mean George Lucas? Oh, yeah. one uh, note grunty pigmen. More, more of a turkey neck than a, than a pig face to me. He's, <laughs> I'm just saying he's fat and one note. Yeah, he's one. grunty. And grunty. <laughs> <laughs> Which one of these is suable? <laughs> uh, okay, anyway, uh, so yeah, it's, it, they, they go out of their way to incorporate a lot of the cool kind of secondary stuff of the Star Wars universe. I like that. Yeah, they picked some of the random dudes out of the cantina and were like, ew. You yeah, can be you, you. You can play as this thing. You can play as an Ithorian. I don't know why you'd want to. They're slow and limber, lumbering, and they take a month to figure out what an animal is. But, you know, go for it. Yeah. All right. And your least favorite thing. I don't care for books that give you an introductory character that talks about the, par the, the uh, chapter for a whole page every time. Oh, and, yeah. We didn't even mention that. Yeah. They have all these NPCs that at the beginning of every chapter pop up and go, Yo, I'm Blaine Hansen. I'm Han Solo, but shitty. Let me tell you all about how great I am and how great my adventures are, even though they're garbage. I'm going to tell you about how adventuring works. So set down and strap up or whatever, because I don't even know how to say words correctly. And then, <laughs> then there's one section, the beginning of one, like the how to be a DM section, where they have an Imperial security agent. Oh, yeah. And he's arguing with a rebel pilot, and it's just pitch the same pictures over and over again, next to them, this rebel pilot lady, like, oh, like, she's kind of got one finger up, like, she's disagreeing with him. Over and over again, as he's like, I'm the Imperial Security Officer, and I'm going to tell you how to play by the rules, because I love rules, and rules are important. And she pops up, and she's like, uh-uh, Dean Hardscrabble. <laughs> uh, yeah. Rules are for dorks. And like, the, the amount of times they use the same picture, and then just, like, crop it, or mirror it, yeah. or whatever... Just to try and make it look like a different picture, it's wonderful. Yeah, the uh, the bounty hunter they use for a lot of the combat sections looks like uh, like just Fattington Lobster Bib the man. <laughs> like, like he's just this big fat dude in fat armor with like like 
he's got a, like and a, he's got a, like a tribal s- tattoo, he's got a star tattoo over one eye, which doesn't look like a tribal tattoo. It looks like necrosis from his fatness. <laughs> it looks like diabetes got him right in the eye. <laughs> yeah, Fattington, Boba Fattington. And we're allowed to say that because we're fat. It's our word. Neither of us have naturally fat occurring black eyes, mind you, but, but, but th- that's just what he looks like. He's just like a big tubby dork. <laughs> yeah. He's got like a top knot, too. That's the best part. Uh, he just, the fact that he's supposed to be the bounty hunter, I'm like, who are you chasing after? <laughs> like, if they try to get away from you on foot, you're like, oh, oh god. I'm gonna get on, I'm gonna get <sighs> in slave five and I'm gonna get you. Oh, oh god, please wait for me. I'm so, I'm so tubby. Oh god. <laughs> I owe Jabba 40,000 microwave pizzas. <laughs> Hot pockets. So there you go. That's my least favorite thing. John, would you recommend or enjoy playing Star Wars, the RPG expanded second edition, letterbox edition? I, I don't, I don't think that I could. Again, I don't think the mechanics are the worst. I mean, obviously we've seen worse on here. Oh yeah, yeah. It's not terrible. It's just, it's just, I wouldn't have... I don't feel like I would have fun playing it. Any but, given role that I would do doesn't feel like I would be enjoying myself. There's a lot to be said that we didn't get into about how the mechanics of this game... It seems pretty simple, right? You roll a handful of dice, you check against a target number, or an opposed roll, move along. Except that when you get into how much damage things do, or how like difficult it is to operate a speeder or repair a speeder, there's like 200 pages of this 270-page book that's just boiled down lists about mechanics. Yeah, and, I mean, the fact that we had already mentioned three of the stats are basically how to do things with mechanics, and it spends a good a portion of the book just going over how difficult it is to accomplish anything. It could take between five minutes and three months to repair the repulsor lift on a T-138 hypo, hypo speeder. And it, it's so, it, it doesn't need to be that way, because these people watch the same movies we did. They watch yeah. Star Wars, and they remember that, yeah, there's some parts where mechanics do stuff. But they do stuff by having tools comically fly out of a hole in the ship, and then someone goes, "I have to defrabulate the contrabulator," and, and then yeah, and I then mean, it you happens. can you can have roles for you have to do something mechanical, but it should be more of a like, okay, I have to do something, and it's a cinematic version of yeah. doing mechanics. That's, it's Star Wars; everything should be cinematic. You don't need to know how long it actually takes to fix a de- uh, the yeah. Star Destroyer. It's a goddamn space opera, not a police procedural. I don't have to worry about everything. Yeah, there's multiple times where the Millennium Falcon is fixed by hitting it. Yeah, I don't believe that would work in this game. Well, I mean, you you could always try and flavor it that way. You're like, yeah. well, I did my roll and I waited three hours and then I hit it and it worked. But mine's not the Millennium Falcon, it's just a stock Corellian YT-1300 <laughs> life <rate. laughs> so, so instead it just fell apart. Yeah. So, oh, oh. There you go. What? So, Jeff, yeah? would you enjoy playing this fucking game? <laughs> Anticipation. Uh, I don't know if I'd enjoy playing this game. I feel like, I, I've played it before and I feel like I would play it. It's got a lot of DM advice in it that's bad DM advice. Like, do this if you want your players to be unhappy and mad at you. <laughs> like, I feel like if you were a smart DM reading this, you'd be like, well, I don't want my players to be unhappy and mad at me. This is a game I'm playing with friends. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ignore all these bad, this bad advice and run this game fast. <laughs> then yeah, you could, I could th- see this game being playable, maybe. But I, I, I don't see a need to recommend it. This is the one of several Star Wars games. The new one is reportedly amazing. The, yeah, the uh, Edge of the Empire. Yeah, I've heard very good things about that game. I, I know it's got some issues with it because it's one of those proprietary dice games. So yeah, you end up rolling a big handful of like various d sixes of different colors with various things on them. So it takes a lot of time to learn how to play it, and it uses abstracted range band mechanics for range, which is always weird to learn. But uh, on the other hand, I've heard it's very fun and very cinematic. Yeah, no, on the on the plus side, I have heard that it is not West End Games. No, neither is it the middle uh, child of the series, which I believe was a D20 product. There was Yeah, which, uh, you know, everything about that was is super deadly, because you could just buy a blaster at level 1 that did like 4D8 damage. Yeah, yeah, so that also exists. So there you go, there are several Star Wars games. Uh, play the new one, if you're playing one. Yeah, yeah. This Please, one's... 
Please don't play the old crappy games that we review. <laughs> if we have one word of advice to you, it is do not suffer the way that we do. Welcome to episode 23, where we finally get around to telling you not to play these games at your own risk. <laughs> Warning, everything we review is balls. Except for the ones we do recommend. Which Except are for great. Palladium. Which is awesome. Play Palladium games. And what else did we actually recommend? Uh, Nobilis? Yeah. White Wolf? Street Fighter? Play that. <laughs> yeah, play the fuck out of some Street Fighter. That Holy crap. Great. Let's go play that right now. <laughs> oh, look at- Okay, so uh, as always, this has been the System Mastery Podcast. You can find us at SystemMasteryPodcast.com or SystemMastery at Gmail, Facebook, Twitter, or you can find the System Mastery Podcast for download at iTunes or Stitcher. So please do, because we like having people listen to us. If you would like us to review a game that you particularly enjoy or don't enjoy, or if you just think we're crazy or wrong, then by all means leave comments here or anywhere else you can possibly leave comments that we might read. Throw a brick through our window. (laughs) Hey, I will murder you unless you review my favorite game. Please cut that out of a magazine and throw it through my window. Include some models with their eyes scratched out. Yeah, if at all possible. That would go be, that uh, extra mile. That'd be ideal. So, um, there you go. I think we're all set. So, in true Star Wars fashion, to wrap up the podcast, I'm going to go ahead and say, Scotty, two to beam up. And good night. Good night.